Hi, I'm Scarlett Russell, Entertainment Director at Style, and I've spent my entire career interviewing celebrities. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little celebrity secret. Those crazy hairstyles you see are wigs. That's right. So today, I've come to see hairstylist to the stars, Sam McKnight, to talk about a few. Hi, Sam. Hello. Thank you for having me here. So we are surrounded by just some of the wigs that you've made throughout your 30-year career? 40-year career? 45. 45-year 45 career. 45, and proud of it. How many wigs do you think you've made Thousands. over that time? Thousands. Thousands. Well, most of these wigs were done for fashion shoots or shows. And let's say you have anything from 50, 60 to 100 models in a fashion show. So you can imagine how that um, multiplies. So why would a designer want to use a wig over, say, a model's like beautiful natural hair? Maybe not so much now, but until, you know, in the past, lots of shows have been about one look for every model. Recently, we've had much more diverse casting, so that's kind of changed a bit. But I think for me, a wig is always a way to kind of unify everything. How much notice do you get before you need to make them? Is it super last minute? It can be super last minute. I remember we did a Fendi show when, when Carl was there back in the day. This is Carl Lagerfeld. This is Carl Lagerfeld, yeah, when Carl Lagerfeld was there back in the day. And we had made 55, there were always 55, 60 girls in those shows. So, so we had made 55 wigs that were kind of short, a little bit punky, uh, but we had made them all at great pains in the girl's own natural hair color. Uh, and the night before the show, Carl decided he wanted them all black. So, <laughs> so um, the hotel room we were staying in was all white and the wigs were being dyed in the bath in the hotel room um, overnight. So you can imagine the bill for the cleaning the next day. We cleaned it as much as we could, but there were a few. Um, stains on the carpet. I'm just looking at all these amazing wigs that you've made and this one is jumping out to me because am I right in thinking this is Lady this Gaga? Is Lady. Yeah this is one we the look we did for Lady Gaga who was in Mugler show in Paris when they relaunched. I mean I worked with Gaga for a couple of years around that time and I mean she's amazing she's absolutely incredible a joy just a wonderful person and you know we made the wig for the meat dress and sort of slapped a steak, pinned a steak on top of it you in did. LA. We did that, yeah. There were a lot of flies in the bathroom <laughs> on that one. Gaga wanted to have this sort of animal vibe and we made these tails from lots and lots and lots of real hair extensions tied and sewn together. They're not one length. It doesn't go from top to bottom. Oh yeah, you can see, it's, yeah. It's, um, graduated. So when she moved, the whole thing moved like a horse's mane or a, a tail would move. You did a lot for the Born This Way. Did you do the Born This Way video? I did the Born This Way video, yeah. Also wigs, similar also to this wigs, actually. Yeah. There was so many different looks in that one. Sometimes with Gaga, we'd have about 40 wigs on the go um, and you'd use all of them. Which would you say is the oldest one? Is there anything from like the 80s, the 90s? Ah, Kate Moss. This was from a Vivian Westwood show, I guess around 94. There was always a sort of a historical influence with Vivian. There was always coquettish, sort of formal idea, historical idea that we kind of punked up. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was big sort of 18th century hair, it would be destroyed a bit and well, a lot. Lots of the girls in this show had big frizzy hair and it was all the supermodels. I mean, Kate Moss, you've worked with countless times. Yeah. And so 1994 would have been just, I guess, at the start of her career. Yeah. How did you meet her? She came on a go-see, that's when the models come to see the photographers, in a an industrial super studio in New York. All the other girls were much taller, much, much more Amazonian. Chins hit the floor when she was on the runway because she just completely owned this little, this little ball of dynamite just owned the runway with all those big girls. It was quite an incredible thing to watch. Once she'd sat in front of the camera, the magic happened. The face loves the camera. And really? the camera loves the face, yes. And your mates? <laughs> 
Yeah, I think it's been 30 odd years. Christy, Linda, Naomi, myself and Mary Greenwell and the four girls all had dinner together. I mean, that sounds like a fun dinner. Oh, it was good. Was it raucous? It was great, yeah. It wasn't raucous, it was, uh, you know, I'd like to think our raucous days are behind <laughs> us, you know what I mean? Uh -uh. Not completely, but it, it was a raucous, but my God, we laughed so much. It was great. It was great. When was it the most raucous? Like the 80s when you were living in New York? Uh, I think 80s and 90s were pretty raucous. There was a lot of partying. Was there? Yeah. Who threw the best party? Kate and Naomi's Halloween parties were legendary. You mentioned Karl Lagerfeld earlier, and I can see a couple of amazing Chanel wigs here, which you would have worked on with Karl. Should we have a little look at those? Yeah, absolutely. Cara Delevingne wore this, or a version of this? I think she wore quite a few versions of it, to be honest. It wasn't just the one. It was, I think, 2012 or something, 2013. I know I had been really, 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 really into coloured hair, odd coloured hair. I had this idea about doing really choppy haircuts. Now stay with me here. <laughs> really choppy haircut version of a Chanel bob, the classic Chanel bob, but just attack it in a sort of punky kind of way. And what we did was, instead of putting the wig on, getting rid of the hair, we made it into a hat and we tied the girl's hair into a low ponytail. And instead of putting the bow on the head, we tied it in a kind of Karl Lagerfeld bow in the back. So there was lots of references flying about. So Sam, tell me how a boy growing up in the 70s in East Ayrshire, Scotland, comes to be one of the most famous hairstylists in the world. Oh God, a lot of skullduggery. Did you always want to do it? I, no, I was at teacher training college. I mean, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I was kind of, all the other students were all hippies and I was into David Bowie and pink hair and all that kind of stuff. My friends owned a hairdressing salon. I went to help them. I moved to London. I was in the right time at the right place. I worked in a salon called Moulton Brown, which was like the coolest salon in London in the late 70s. It was amazing before they were known for the, what the brand is now. And I had the most amazing time and education there, learning how to use my hands properly with hair without any tools, because they were very much about the natural side of things. They made their own natural hair products before anyone did. And I think I was there at the very beginning of when fashion became mainstream. Within a couple of years, I decided that I didn't want to go back in the salon. I wanted to take a risk and just do photo shoots. Everyone thought I was mad because there wasn't really enough photo shoots to have a career. It's not like it is now. And then in the 80s, the whole thing exploded. You know, and by the 90s, it was mainstream. So I really was in the right time at the right place. And in the 80s, I spent a lot of time in New York, most of my time in New York, and was there for the beginning of what became known as the supermodels. Sam, I could sit and talk to you all day about hair, but I think our time is up. So thank you so much for having me and thank talking you. me Thanks through all these things. Thank you.